Hello and welcome to HelpYourMath.com. In this video, we're going to look at the graphs of the parent functions for the sine and cosine functions. A few things about the graphs of the sine and cosine functions. So when we're talking about a graph, it's like taking the unit circle but then extending x so that way we don't just go in circles, literally. Um, no pun intended. Uh, we'll, we'll actually continue to graph along the x-axis. When we graph sine and cosine graphs in the coordinate plane, these graphs are cyclic. That means that the shape repeats over and over and over again. They both look like waves, and thus they're sometimes referred to as sine waves or cosine waves. When we graph either of these functions, typically we do so by identifying five key points of any single cycle. So remember, one cycle is from start to finish, going back to where we started. The x values are more commonly in radians for these graphs rather than degrees, but really it could be either way. Some definitions um, that we're going to encounter as we come across our sine and cosine graphs. The first one is called the amplitude. The amplitude of a sine or cosine graph represents the height from the middle line of the graph to the highest point on the graph. The other way we can interpret an amplitude is that it's half the height from the lowest point to the highest point of the graph. We can determine the amplitude of the equation of a sine or cosine graph by taking the absolute value of a. So we say amplitude is the absolute value of a. So notice what a is. a is the coefficient of either sine or cosine. The other important thing we're going to come across is what's called a period. The period of a sine or cosine graph represents the length it takes to complete one cycle. So we do the entire graph and then we get back where we started and then the next cycle starts. We call that a period. We can determine the period using the following formula. And again, I assume here that the domain is in radians. It's going to be 2 pi divided by b. If it's in degrees, then we would find the period by taking 360 and dividing it by b. And hopefully this makes sense because what are 2 pi and 360 if we think back to our unit circle? That's when we get back to zero, right? That's if we have our unit circle here, here's zero, here's 90 or pi over two, here's pi, here's three pi over two. This goes back to two pi, so this is zero or two pi. So that would complete one circle, right? This would be one complete circle. It'll be the same thing when we actually take the graph and kind of like split it apart. Okay, so let's look at our parent function of our sine graph. The parent function will be y equals sine of x. The domain here, we can plug in anything we want for x. There's no restrictions, so it's going to... Uh-oh. Don't be all weird. It's going to go from negative infinity to infinity. No, it's going to be weird. Okay. Cool. What if I put it up here? Nope. What if I put it over here? Ha. Beat it. Domain is from negative infinity to infinity. The range, so the range is going to be easier to identify once we know the amplitude. Um, the amplitude in this case, since there's nothing being multiplied to sine of x, we'd say that there's a 1, so the amplitude is 1. This means that, okay, I'm going to go over here again. Amplitude is 1. Um, so the range is going to be from, it's going to go up to 1, but also it's going to go down to negative 1. So the range will be from negative 1 to positive 1. The amplitude is 1. And then the period, remember how we calculate the period, this is 2 pi divided by b. Well, in this case, b is the thing being multiplied to x, since we don't see anything, it's a, it's a 1. Um, so this would be 2 pi divided by 1, which is 2 pi. And the next thing that is really helpful is to identify the five key points of one period. And the way we can do that, we can relate it directly back to the unit circle. So I'm going to try to squash in a unit circle, knowing I'm kind of restricted, because for some reason the middle is wigging out. Whee. Okay, so if we think of our unit circle, this is the point 1, 0, this is the point 0, 1. Over here we have negative 1, 0, and down here we have 0, negative 1. The way that I generally find the five key points is I figure out what increment do I need. And the way I can figure out the increment or the space between, because really what we're looking for when we're graphing our sine and cosine graphs, we know that it's going to hit every point between negative 1 and 1. But that's the thing, we want to find where is that minimum, negative 1, where is the maximum 1, and then where is the middle of the 2, which in this case would be 0. So for increments, I take the period and I divide it by 4. And that's going to tell me what I need to add to x each time to find the next, what I call, key point, either a high, a medium, or a low. Um, so we're going to, to figure out the increments, we take the period, 2 pi, and divide it by 4. And this gives us pi over 2. And this should be no surprise that we end up with pi over 2. Pi over 2 is up here. Um, so that's going to be the increments that we want to go in, which makes sense because that's going to be the, 
the, the largest of either the x or y values that we see in our unit circle. Okay, so first thing we want to do is we want to figure out what sine of zero is. Sine of zero, so remember sine, this is cosine, and this is sine. Sine of zero is zero. So our first point, let me say first key point for our sine graph is zero, zero. The first key point for our sine graph is zero, zero, because if we plug in zero to this, sine of zero is zero. To figure out the second key point, we're going to add the increment pi over 2 to 0. That's going to give us pi over 2. Well, what is sine at pi over 2? Let's look up here. Sine will be 1. So there's our maximum. Great. Our third key point, we're going to add pi over 2 to pi over 2. That's going to be pi. We can refer to our unit circle. What is sine at pi? That's 0. So we go back to the middle. Our fourth key point, we're going to add pi to pi over 2 to our increments. That'll give us 3 pi over 2. And at 3 pi over 2, sine is negative 1. And then lastly, our fifth key point for this first period, or one of the periods, would be 3 pi over 2 plus the increment pi over 2. That would be 4 pi over 2, which is 2 pi. And 2 pi goes back to 0. So we've just completed one cycle or one period of this graph. Now, this is continuous, so we could do a second one by adding another pi over 2 to our fifth key point and just keep doing that, and you'll see it'll end up being the, the, the y values are going to always be 0, 1, 0, negative 1, 0. All right, so when we set up our graph here, um, we're going to, I'm going to skip it. I'm going to do one here just so it's not so squished. And then here I'll do increments of pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2. 2 pi, I think it's important we do a second cycle. So if I add pi over 2 to 2 pi, that would be 5 pi over 2. And then that would be 6 pi, which is 3 pi, uh, 6 pi over 2, which is 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, and 8 pi over 2, which would be 4 pi. So we'll graph two complete cycles here. So we have 0, 0, then pi over 2, 1. Pi goes back to 0. 3 pi over 2 goes down to negative 1. 2 pi goes back to 0. The 2 pi is the end of one period and the beginning of a second period. So from here, from 2 pi, we would go back up to 1, down to 0, down to negative 1, and back up to 0. When we go to draw the curve, this is a smooth curve. Do not put v's on your paper. That is just absolutely not correct. Nice smooth curve connecting the points. And this graph will just, it'll keep going in this pattern forever and ever and ever. This is why it's called the cyclic pattern. So a few things to point out. If we're given the graph, um, we can see here this works out really nice because it's right on the x-axis, but this would be the middle line of the graph because it's the in between, uh, exactly halfway in between the highest point and the lowest point. Then this here would be the amplitude, or we could say this here is the amplitude. It doesn't matter which one, just from the middle line to either the tallest point or the middle line to the, the bottom most point. We can see one complete cycle starts here and ends here, right? Because we hit every major point along the way. We went up to one, we went down to negative one, and we hit everything in between. So this is the parent function of a sine graph. Let's take a look at the parent function of a cosine graph. So cosine, let's see if I can write over here now. Yeah, I can, yay. Negative infinity to infinity will be our domain. We're going to have the same range as our sine graph. It turns out that our sine graph and cosine graph actually look identical. They are the exact same graph. So this one's also going to be like this. It's just we start in a different place with our cosine graph um, because cosine of zero does not equal zero like it does for sine. The amplitude here will be one. The period, that's two pi over b, where b in this case is one, so it's going to be two pi. We can determine the five key points using the same uh, strategy that I used last time. So to determine the increment that we want to use, the increment, we're going to take the period and divide it by 4. So that's going to be 2 pi divided by 4, which equals pi over 2. And again, that should be no surprise um, because it basically refers to the unit circle. So just to help us, maybe we'll just recreate a unit circle on this page too. We have 1, 0, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, negative 1. But remember with cosine, we're looking at the x values. So when we do our first key point, that's going to be cosine of 0, and cosine of 0 is 1. The si oh, I put key point, and I didn't say which one. We're going to say first. First key point 
our second key point. So we're going to, to figure out the x's, we add the increment 0 plus 2 pi is, or excuse me, 0 plus pi over 2 is pi over 2. And then what's the x value? What's cosine of pi over 2? Cosine of pi over 2 is 0. Our third key point, we're going to add pi over 2 to pi over 2, which will give us pi. And we look at the x value at um, pi, cosine of pi is negative 1. Our fourth key point for one cycle, we're going to add pi over 2 to pi. That's going to give us 3 pi over 2. And we end up with 3 pi over 2, and it goes back to 0 for us. And then our last key point, um, we're going to add pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2. That'll give us 2 pi, and it goes back to 1. So notice that a complete cycle, it's the, the y value of the first key point and the last key point are identical, and that's how it should be. We have to complete the cycle. We have to hit every point along the way. So we need to make sure that the first and the fifth always have the same y value, which should make sense, right? Because cosine of 0 is the exact same as cosine of 2 pi. When we go to graph this, so I'm going to do the same thing I did last time. We're just going to skip one. This will be pi over 2, pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi, 5 pi over 2, 3 pi, 7 pi over 2, and 4 pi. Um, this time when I go to, ooh, that looks weird, 4 pi, that's better. This time when I go to graph it, we're starting up at the maximum, 0, 1. When we get to pi over 2, we're at 0. When we get to pi, we're down at negative 1. 3 pi over 2, we're back at 0. And 2 pi, we're back at 1. So just so we see this graph, if we just graph one period, it's a little bit hard to tell that it's actually identical to our sine graph, right? Because this one kind of looks like a U, whereas the sine graph clearly looked like this. Um, but if we graph a second period, you'll see that it, it's the exact same thing. So now we would go back to 0, down to negative 1, back to 0, and finish the cycle at the top. So now you can start seeing the wave, and it's going to keep doing this pattern this way and this way to infinity. We can also see the same attributes here. We see the middle line cuts through here. The amplitude is here, or the amplitude is here.